The book of Mark in the New Testament in the Gospels, chapter 7 today. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of the disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say with unwashed hands, they found fault. Now, obviously you can see these Pharisees and Sadducees were hypocrites. They're just looking to find little picadillos of fault. Oh, you didn't show up to work in time today. You were 10 seconds late. That's terrible. While they're committing adultery and ruining their marriage and their children's lives. Little picadillos. For the Pharisees and the Jews, except they wash their hands off, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Let me tell you something. They're out in the wilderness starving, and they had no water, and they came upon some, if you ever go out in the desert, some of them little cactus that have the little, the little fruits on them, and you're hungry, you're going to take your knife and skin off the little prickers around the outside, and you're going to pop those babies in your mouth, and they're going to be delicious, and you're not going to be worried about washing your hands. And if you don't do it, then why do you look and pick fault that somebody doesn't? I'll tell you why, because they're hypocrites, just looking to find fault. When they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and of the tables. People that come up to you and say, oh, do you, do you keep this festival? Do you, do you keep Saturday or do you keep Sunday? Or do you, eat, do you eat pork or do you only eat, you know, whatever? People with their little picadillos. It's like, it's their, none of their business. That's between you and God. But when it comes to a sin issue, and your brethren is trapped, his, his pack is a little too heavy, and he needs a little help, and you come to us and say, brother, you looks like you're in over your head. That's fair and right and just. Because you see, to his eternal needs, his physical needs. Because one with Christ is a majority. And when a man is separated from Christ, he's lost. He's lost. He can't find his way. He's caught up in busy things or just caught up in nothing. To be separated from Christ is eternity. And he's just lost and he needs help. Little picadillos of, do you do this? Do you do that? Do you smoke cigarettes? Do you not smoke cigarettes? Do you have a glass of wine at communion or grape juice? Little picadillos. It's nobody's business. It's their business. Like Jesus said to the little picky disciples, what is it to you what I do with John? You follow me. His business is not your business. Your business is not his business. You follow Christ. May I follow Christ. Verse 5. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah the prophet spoken of ye hypocrites, as it is written, The people honors me with their lips, but their heart as far from me. They're banging their drum about all their little deeds, the little deeds that their kids did, and, you know, uh, little things that make you think more highly of them than what they really are. It's just lepers. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrines, the commandment of men, and laying aside the commandment of God, he hold the tradition of men as the washing of 
pots and cups and many other such things like ye do. He said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoso curses father of mother, let him die the death. I tell you, there would be a lot of dead children in this age, in this society in which we live. Children cursing their parents, hitting their parents, picking fights with their parents, threatening their parents. Our society has strayed from the laws of God. A lot of confusion in children. Children are, are fed leaven. I pity the children of this age. They're caught up in a lot of busy, busy distractions, but not the word of God. And if your children are not hearing the word of God in your home, they truly are going to have a rough road. Your children need to hear the word of God in your home, at the coffee table, at the dinner table, at the breakfast table, at the family gathering, at the devotionals. The word of God needs to be flowing in your home for you, for your spouse, for your children, and all that might be there. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corbin, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. In other words, they're saying the little gifts that you use to support your mom and your dad or help them out should be given to the church and to the Pharisees and Sadducees to go on trips and to build new additions to put in carpeting. and and uh, No, you need to worry about your mom and dad first. You need to give to the word of God, to the ministry of the word of God. But there's a lot of stuff we support and the money is quite frankly really don't get to the teaching of the word of God. And that's not my part really to say it because uh, you vote by your checkbook. You support by your checkbook. If you don't believe a ministry is feeding the lambs, the sheep, the word of God, don't support them. Simple as that. If your mom and dad are hungry, make sure you take them a bag of groceries before you spend the rest of your money on, on supporting a, a ministry. Not that that's not important. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to sidestep that. But you need to make sure and take care of mom and dad, you know, if they're hungry, obviously. Take care of mom and dad. And then, after you've taken care of mom and dad, then give to your church. So that's what the Pharisees said here. Before you give to mom and dad, give to us first. Honor your mother and your father is one of the Ten Commandments. Very high on the list. Respect your parents. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such things like this do ye. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things that come out of him, these are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Don't get too caught up in you don't eat pork and you don't eat this and you don't eat that and you're only a, a vegan and, you know, those don't make you righteous. If you want to have your own little food code, that's okay. God gave them a food code in the Old, Old Testament because they would get deathly sick and cause diseases that they wouldn't otherwise have by eating unclean meat. Pigs are nasty animals. doesn't mean we don't have pig meat. We take, we're, we take a little better care of our animals than let them eat dead animals all the time. But back then, it was they ate everything that was in their path. A lot of disease. But what you eat, not so much makes you clean, physically even, but spiritually. 
That doesn't make you righteous. What makes righteousness is the washing of the blood of Christ, the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. It's God that causes the increase. And what we do is out of obedience and love to our Master and our Savior, the Son of God. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 16. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entering into the man, it cannot defile him? In other words, I'm not going to be spiritually better off if I eat a ham sandwich or a lamb sandwich. Okay, That isn't going to make my eternal destiny more secure or not secure. It's irrelevant. I'm eating it to give my body nourishment. What happens in here, in my mind, in my heart, what comes out of my mouth, what I dwell upon, what I, who I aim to please, who I choose to love. I choose to love the Son of God, Yeshua. And from there, everything else is after that. And when you do that, you're on the, you're on the narrow road, you're on the right road. Because if you might be off the road a little bit, if you choose to love Jesus first and foremost, you're, you're going to get on the right path. Are you so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? So bring you put it in the pie hole, that's not what's going to affect your spiritual well-being. It enters not into your heart, but into the belly, and goeth into the draught, purging all meats. In other words, by the time of the New Testament, you didn't care what meat you ate, because now you're sanctified in Jesus Christ. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defiles you, what, what pours out of your pie hole, either blessings or cursings. That's what defiles you and where you're going with that. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetous, wickedness, deceit, lascivi lasciviousness, evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. You could take lasciviousness and swirl it up with sensuality, things that just, just please your flesh, anything, food, whatever, people, videos, magazines, drugs, whatever, can be all swirled up in a, what just yourself, selfish gluttony of all sorts, lasciviousness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon, and entered into a house, and he would not have no man known of it, but he could not be hid. He wanted to have a little peace time, a little privacy time. However, a certain woman whose young daughter had a demon heard of him and came and fell at his feet. And the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician of a nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bed, bread and cast it unto the dogs. She answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. He said unto the woman, Because of this saying, Go thy way, the demon is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the demon out of her daughter, and her in her right mind laying upon the bed. That's a beautiful thing. Verse 31. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they brought unto him one that was deaf and had an impairment in his speech. And they besought him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears, and he spit and touched his tongue. Now, if that sounds gross to you, I guarantee you, the man that was about to be healed couldn't care less. He wanted to be healed. 
And looking up to heaven, he sighed and saith unto him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were open, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plainly. And quite frankly, he was being touched by God. How great it would be to have God touch you in any way, shape, or form. And this man was touched by God, and he was healed. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more, a great deal, they published it. And they were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. He did a miracle. He zaubergat, God that does magical healings, spiritual, eternal, supernatural, Holy Spirit healings that were real. No shows, no coliseums taking up offerings, no pushing on foreheads, no blowing on people, just healed. A true healing, because that's God. When God does a true healing, it's a healing. No shows, just beautiful miracles in the name of God our Father. So with that, we wrap up the book of Mark, chapter 7. Lots of wonderful things. It's a beautiful opportunity when you hear the scriptures and you think to yourself, hmm, that's interesting. Maybe I should go back and take a look at that. And thus you should. Not only to confirm what I have said, but to confirm the word of God in your own heart, your own mind, your own life, your own soul, and to let it speak to you between you and God. So I would encourage you, whip out these scriptures, get your Bible out, meditate upon the word, let it speak to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, friends. See you next time.